Hello everybody and welcome back to the labs. I am Tausty and today we're doing another episode of our mod spotlight on Ender IO and I'm just going to pick up right where we left off, left off, but if you missed the first part, we are on the Bevo Tech Pack the 1710 version on the AT launcher and go head over to the AT launcher site. The link is in the description to pick it up and and play along. Once again, I'm going to give you this disclaimer for people just joining us that these wings are not from Ender IO. They are from XG Utilities. I'm only wearing them because I like the flight it gives me without having to be in creative. I find that I break a lot of stuff by accident by clicking on when I'm in creative and it drives me insane. So that's why I have these wings on. Let's begin. So last time we ended by showing you the energy conduit, the high tier, which is the same as the rest of them, the energy conduit and the item conduit. I did forget to show you that like the ener the item conduit, you can right click on the face of the energy conduit and set how it interacts with redstone, set a signal color, which I'll go over in a little bit, and set its mode. By default, it's on in and out, and that works for most things. However, in the case of our little generation system here, I don't want the power to be bouncing back and forth like it is right now. So I'm just going to leave it on extract and that'll make sure that it just pulls out power instead of letting it go back and forth to these two capacitor banks. So we left off looking at some item conduit. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you real quick a couple of the other upgrades in the conduit. Um, we already saw the speed upgrade, which lets you put 15 in here. And when I click the button, it'll start extracting everything. Now what I'm also going to show you is the item filter. If there is a basic version, which let you choose a whitelist and whether or not it's going to match or ignore metadata, whitelist or blacklist, lets you choose the uh, channel and everything is the default. And it lets you have a filter of up to five items. And that's all well and good, but there is also the advanced filter. The advanced filter is some paper, a head of some sort, and some redstone. And the basic one is some paper and a hopper. So if you get your holes, you, oh, get your holes, come on. Um, if you get a hold of some skulls or some heads or whatever you can find, even if they are your own, I believe you can just kill yourself over and over and get these. Um, you can create yourself a whole bunch of these item filters rather cheaply, but the heads are definitely the difficult part. The advanced ones allow you to do a whitelist and a blacklist, allow you to use the or dictionary. If you don't know what that is, um, it's one of the, my most favorite upgrades that Forge has added into their system uh, in the, the last recent year, couple versions of Minecraft or so, where you can uh, say what type of item something is in your code, and it'll link up to other kinds of it. So for example, I can say I have copper in my mod, then somebody else can say they have copper in their mod, and by linking it into the Forge dictionary, you can say, hey, well, these are both copper. This can be anybody's copper that's linked like this can be used in my mod. So that might make, not make sense. Um, basically, you'll see I have a ton of different kinds of copper here. We got forestry, we got IC2, we got mechanism, we got tinker's construct, flax spirit, steam power, blue power, thermal foundation, all this good stuff, forestry. Um, you, you can see pretty quickly that that would get annoying to have to filter all those out. Thankfully, most of them, if not all of them, are registered in the forge or dictionary which you can see here, which means Industrial Craft 2 copper can be used in any recipe that is used by pretty much any other copper like this that's registered in the dictionary. That way, if I put a piece of copper, which I have here, into my advanced item filter, and say, yes, use the ore dictionary, it doesn't matter what kind of copper I put in the extraction, it will pull all of the copper, let's get this going, into this chest because it's using the ore dictionary. And that can be really handy. It's not going to populate because this is a, the shortest path or I didn't put these on input. That's why. Great. So let's put this on insert. Sorry, let's pull this out first, then put it on insert. Derp. There we go. So now you'll see all the copper populated in here as well as some other stuff that wasn't really supposed to. All right, so we've got our filter, we've got our insert, we've got our copper, easy peasy. So that's what the um, that's what the advanced item filters give you the benefit of, as well as matching or ignoring NBT data. So this gives you a lot of options for sorting different things. Then you have this sticky mode. Now, when you have it set to sticky mode, 
the items that are in the filter will only be sent this way. So, if or other sticky outputs, as you can see it says. But basically what that means is even though I have copper maybe on this filter, or not at all, let's, let's put it on this filter just, just to make this show off a little bit. Um, yeah, there we go. Sorry. Oh, okay. So I've got my copper in here. Let's take a couple and show them off over here. I got copper on this with an enabled ore dictionary. Even if I put these in here, they're not going to go, or they shouldn't go. They should all go in here. Like that. Yeah, sorry. That, that was just being a little weird. So even though I've got copper in here, i got it set on insert. This is the sticky version, so all the copper is going to find its way over here, not to this one, even though it's the shortest path. That's what sticky does. It's it's handy, but I find it it's a little difficult to work with at times. Um, I would rather set priorities and just certain filters on things, but uh, we'll get into that. How it, so that's what sticky does. If you're curious, I just I haven't found it to be that useful for my builds and the way that I work, but I can see how it's handy. Um, especially if you're doing things like a trash bin or something like that and you can just say get all the cobble over here regardless of where it goes. So that's that. The other thing you can do that I just talked about is this priority. You can set the priority of the path that it's on. So I can, this is this is great. I can say, you know, it doesn't matter what I put in the input chest, this is going to be the last place it goes now even though it's got copper. So long as I turn off my sticky mode, which I did, I can put loads of copper in here and it... Um, it should, what's it doing? Let's just set this to input. It, it'll fire it over there because this is set at such a low priority and that can be really, really handy. You can make this sort of the, the last path that it's gonna go down or you can make it the most important path. All right, so that's great. So that is the item conduits. Now, again, they're made in a way that I will show you what the ingredients are for, but before we leave the conduits to do that, we're also going to look at the fluid conduits. NRIO has, like the power conduits, three kinds of fluid conduits. So the beauty of these conduits are they are a great model. Again, you can see through the pressurized ones. Sorry, I forgot what they were called there for a second. And in the ender fluid conduits, you can actually have more than one fluid in the same pipe. So the, this is your basic fluid conduit. It's made with some quite clear glass, which I'll show you in a minute, and some conduit binder. The pressurized one is some fused quartz, which I said earlier I would show you as well. And the ender, the, uh, ender fluid conduit is a couple of fused quartz and a vibrant alloy, which I will also be showing you and is used in the recipe for the, uh, the best energy conduits that this mod has. All right, so that's that. So what you can do is just like the item conduits and the power conduits, you can say, let's get on here. Oh, you can see, sorry, I wasn't quite sure about that one. But you can see these and that way you really know what's going on. Let's move some our conduits over this way and let's put, I got some reservoirs here, which are uh, a way of holding fluid, which are just some glass, any kind of glass around a cauldron from Ender IO. Uh, let's put this guy here. So right now we're gonna pull I got jet fuel, I believe it's in this, or rocket fuel. I'm going to set it to extract, just like the other ones. You can see it fill up with liquid, and it will eventually begin to fill the reservoir. However, I believe the reservoir is only for water, which is why it's not doing that, and I completely forgot about that. So let's just pick this guy up, and let's put um, a different kind of tank down. In fact, this is a good time to show you the block I should have put down, not from ender storage at all the I forget what it's called where did it go there it is so the fluid tank the fluid tank is what holds generic fluids and not the reservoir I'll show you what that's for in a moment so we're just going to pull water or fluid uh, rocket fuel out of this and it'll begin to fill this inventory which holds 16 buckets of fluid and then just like the other blocks we can configure this to how it accepts and, and whether it pushes or pulls the fluid out of it, just like the other Ender IO blocks. All right. Now there's an upgraded version of this fluid tank, which is the pressurized version, which can hold, I believe, double the amount of fluid. Yeah, double. So 32 mega millibuckets. Um, 
one of the really nice things about these tanks that you can that you just saw is that you can shift right click them with your wrench pick them up and you will be good to go they will retain their fluid and you can move them where you need to and then just plop them down next to the inventory and you can configure them just to push their fluid out really really great again I love this mod. This is probably my favorite mod, so this is one of the reasons I'm doing it, but you can tell that all the features in it I just think are designed for great convenience, but not a huge amount of overpoweredness. Um, there is some aspects of this mod that are quite overpowered, but I love it. So that is the fluid tanks and the basic fluid conduits. The pressurized fluid conduits act very much the same way as the basic ones, except they move fluids faster and more fluid at a time which can be really handy if you're going far distances or you have uh, a fluid that uses maybe a lot or a machine that uses a lot of fluid and needs to get it pumped in quick. That's where these guys come in handy. So let's take another fluid tank, a big one, and let's do that. And you can see that as soon as I tell it to pull fluid out of here, it'll just begin to fill this guy up so much faster. So that's the pressurized fluid conduit. You can't see inside of it, so it's not as nice of a render, but it does its purpose very well. The ender fluid conduit, actually, which is what I put down there. I thought you could put the pressure, yeah, sorry. Pressurized fluid conduit is exactly what I said. It's faster and more fluid and you can see through it. Um, I just kind of derped on which one I put down. So it's a bit different texture so you can see it, but um, it does the same thing. The ender fluid conduit is completely different, I guess. Not completely different. It's still a conduit. It still moves fluids around. But what it also does is it moves more than one at a time. So let me get a couple of fluid tanks here. I'm going to put one here and one here. And we're going to set this to extract on both. Now, obviously, there's a reason that you can't see the inside. There's no inner rendering for the type of fluid it's pulling out. So I'm going to do this. Let's see just what happens if I put these down. Oh, they're both the wrong kind. Well, you can fix that. Um, you can filter out certain uh, you can't really see it in my pack also I have this set up wrong but um, you can designate basically the best way to do it that I know of is to pick this up and the people in the comments can probably correct me on this I'm pretty sure there's a way to do it with the conduits but just take a bucket of the fluid you want I want some of this I'm gonna put that guy there that one's good actually so let's do I'm gonna take some rocket fuel and put it here oh that's the wrong kind did I miss? I guess I did. Take some rocket fuel. All right, so there is a bug for him. If you take that. So let's actually just go back to Ender.io and grab the, the bucket. And I will report that as soon as I can. Let's take some rocket fuel. And let's put it here. Now this may explain why it kind of bugged out the way it did. If I put this guy down, nothing. So there's actually a bug. When you pull um, fluid ender IO fluid out of these creative tanks from thermal expansion it seems to create the same fluid every time um yeah it, that that just shouldn't happen but that's the idea you can do two liquids at one time and i know this has not been the greatest example because it didn't work but um i will sh show you at the end another way just using actual actual tanks okay actually you know what let me show you now before i forget put this guy down here I'm going to put one on here like this, and then I'm going to take a, another fluid tank, put them here, and I'm just going to put a bucket of water in just to set the kind that it is so it doesn't fill up. This way it only takes on regular water. And then I'm going to show you the reservoir. This is the last sort of fluid handling device that I'm going to show you before we move on to the vat. Now, reservoirs are a multi block structure that hold water. Um, basically what happens is you make this square with them and if you put two buckets of water in it creates just like a normal two buckets of water can an infinite source of water so it'll continually fill up the reservoir and this is great. Now if you shift right click it with a wrench you see this blue arrow. Not the prettiest render in the world but it serves its purpose. Now the tank is actually pushing the fluid out of it. Before it was just sitting idle and you can pull the water out but if you shift right click it, it is pushing the water out of the tank. So I won't even have to configure this if I were to put this fluid down um, and give it somewhere to go. Actually, you will with the fluid conduits just because of the way they're designed. But um, it will push water out of the tank. So let me pick it up and 
No. So kind of annoying to break. There we go. Let's put it here. All right. We got our two buckets in there still, so it will fill up, and I will push it out. And you can see that it is starting to fill this because it's on push mode. Once it gets to the top, it will begin to refill. However, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this fluid conduit here, and I'm going to come over here because I like to run all of my fluids in one area. Doop, doop, doop. All right. And I'm going to say, you know what? Let's, yeah, let's, let's make sure you're extracting. And then I'm, I'm going to come over here with this fluid conduit. And I'm going to disable it from here. There we go. Sorry. And it said to input there. Now you can see that this fluid tank is full. And it's actually going through the handler for these fluids going into this. Um, if I pick this guy up. Put another one down. Who knows what the fluid we'll get. <laughs> just based on the way this is going. There we go. We got some water going in there as well. But if I were to take that out and predetermine it with a bucket of the the distil the um, nutrient uh, distillation, it would send it both across the same pipe and go in the right place. So really, really handy, um, especially if you're moving like in a, a Billcraft refinery, you can move fluid or fuel and water into um, not a refinery, sorry, into a combustion engine using the same pipe so that saves you a face and that can be really really handy and they're a high pressure high powered pipe so they move a lot at one time so that's really really handy so moving on though that is extra utilities that are not under io let's take a quick look at the vat well yes let's finish our conduits i keep forgetting i have other conduits before we leave them, we're going to look at the redstone conduits. These are the last kind of conduits from Ender.io that I'm going to cover. Uh, and I believe the last ones overall. Let's just make sure I didn't miss anything. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to show you this filter. The existing item filter is for the item conduit. I meant to put that in there. Basically, it filters it so that only items that already exist in that inventory will be put in it. So if I have a chest full of cobblestone and I tell a chest to extract my, my wood from that inventory... It won't move it to the chest full of cobblestone. It will only put cobblestone in that chest because that's what already exists there. So that is a very, very handy little mod. Or filter, sorry. All right. So the last conduit that I'm going to look at is the redstone conduit. You have two different kinds. You have the insulated redstone and the uninsulated redstone. Now, the insulated redstone conduit is designed to uh, to not interact with the stuff around it unless you tell it to. So for example, I have, ooh, let's not show that off just yet. Let's take one of these fluid tanks and plop it on there. Now this will take a signal or not. It depends um, on what I want it to do. But you could attach one of these redstone conduits and say a lever to it. Let's reset that. I don't know why it's like that. And attach a lever to it. And it would move the redstone signal along the conduit. And there we go. So now this would be getting a redstone signal. And to show that off a little bit better, let's get a lamp. Excuse me, I am about to sneeze. Don't you just hate it when the sneeze doesn't come? Well, we're back and I, I did not get a chance to sneeze. Oh, well. So if I hook this up to the lamp here, you'll see there we go. So this is the redstone conduit. This is the insulated conduit. This will just, it won't connect to blocks next to it. It'll just provide a redstone signal without having to. That's the beauty of the uninsulated one. The insulated ones need to have a connection. So you'll see it connects there. But I could take it and disable the connection, and it'll turn off. That's the beauty of the insulated ones. You have a bit more control over them that way. So you might have seen when I put the, connect, or when I put the, the redstone lamp down, I have to fix it like that. The red band around this. Now, this is not a design because it's a redstone conduit. This is part of all of the conduits designs, and I've been uh, I've been skipping over what they do. So, all the conduits have this color system. The item conduits have it, um, and the power conduits have it, and I believe, yeah, the fluid conduits have it as well. Now, this is um, a particularly handy feature that I just I love. What this allows you to do is to create little separated networks within the same conduit system. 
So for example, if I had three chests here, like that, and I had them all connected with my item conduits, I could have them all running through the same line, but set up in, in network separated by each other. Like this one would only extract and send to this one because they were on the same network. And you do that with these colored filters. So this one is set to the green channel. This one is set to the green channel. If I were to change these ones to brown and brown, nothing that I extracted from this would make it anywhere but into this chest. And I need to remove the filter for that to happen. All right, so now we got our block of coal. It won't make it into these because they're not on the same little network. That goes for redstone as well. If I were to change this connection to a green signal, you could see that we're still actually um, getting a signal up here to this guy. And I'll show you that by putting um, another lamp down. Let's put us a redstone lamp down. So you can see that the um, the red, because the lever is set to the red channel, this is still on and this one is not. But if I take another lever, and I'm sure you can guess by now what this means, and set this to the green channel, when I decide to turn it on, that guy turns on. But the red one stays on, alterated. All right? So that's what these little bands are for. It works the same way for the item conduits and the power conduits and the fluid conduits. Basically, you set, um, or sorry, not the not the power conduits. It's a little different for that. But for the item conduits and the fluid conduits, sorry, just the everything but the item conduits work the same way. I don't know where my brain is. The item conduits are a channel system where you get to set subnetworks of channels. Everything else is designed to interact with the redstone cables. So I could have a conduit next to these guys saying, you know, let's everybody only interact with the blue channel of redstone. Same with the fluid conduit. Turn it off and only interact with the blue channel of redstone. Now, that may seem a little odd to you. Like, why are, do I have to have cables running? Like, is that so that if I do this, or these are the wrong ones, these aren't the insulated ones, are they? Let's throw the insulated ones back on there and get rid of these guys. I don't use them very often, um, the, ins the non-insulated ones. So does that mean I, I have to interact with them like this and make them touch somehow? Well, well no. Here is what makes Ender.io so different and unique and amazing than most mods that have this sort of structure. Here we go. If I want to have these work together, I don't need them beside each other. I can put them in the same block. All of the conduits in Ender.io can be put in the same block. Let's get some fluid conduits in here. Uh, and let's get uh, let's just run this over here so you can see it a bit better. All right, we got fluid in there. You can kind of see it. Drop down in the hole, right? And let's get some item conduit going, just so you can see that they are all in the same block. And just how think of just how useful that would be. Look at that. So what this does is this allows you to put all sorts of different things on one face of a block and it makes it so, so powerful. This redstone then, might you might get upset because you think, well, that's going to interact with everything. It's going to cause problems. No, that's what these channels are for. You can separate it. You can say this redstone conduit, I need to act on different blocks in the same area, but I only really want it to act on this one kind of conduit. Well, that's what these channels are for and that's why they interact the way they do. When you right click on the face to configure it, you'll see you get tabs to choose on what choose what you're working with. And it is so, so handy. So those days before when you'd have to have cables running into all sorts of sides, this is really helpful for things like, um, like MFR farms. You don't need to have, you know, a bunch of uh, a block coming out or a cable coming out the back and then going to the side or going into both sides. You just have this one side of your block being used. And it, it can be so, so helpful and just create these really powerful, compact little builds. That's why I used these when I automated my AE2 uh, inscriber things in the AE2 spotlight. I just, I love these cables and these conduits. They're so good. But they are not the cheapest things in the world to make, which is why I am okay with them being as powerful as they are.
in order to make them, we're going to get into a couple of the other machines in Ender I.O. That would be the alloy smelter and the sag mill. So this is kind of like the processing system of Ender I.O. And for the sake of my little setup here, I'm going to build it inside my base. I'm going to put my sag mill here, my alloy smelter here. I'm going to get a couple of chests. Let's get some big chests just for fun. Boom, boom. And we're going to look at these two guys. Now you can see they're already getting power, but because I've made my walls of my base out of capacitors, that's how they're getting power. And you can see that they hold 100,000 RF each. And uh, that's kind of bog standard for the Ender IO blocks. However, for the sake of this, I showed you this earlier. You can put these capacitors in to upgrade them. And I'm going to do that just so you guys can see how fast these things can go. Actually, oh, I will show you that in a second just so you see how slow they are to begin with. So the sag mill is kind of like your grinding device. It is like uh, pulverizers and macerators and stuff like that in um in ie2 or ie2 ic2 and te4 um it, it it's like a lot of other machines there's not a whole lot going on here differently but there's a couple things so what you can do is you can take ore for example and throw it in your machine and it'll start to cook through it and it will grind it down into a gold dust from ender io boom okay so that's working on that you can see how fast that goes Let's put us an octatic capacitor in there and look at this. It just begins to soar. Now, I've got this alloy smelter right beside it and we're gonna take a look at that, what that block is and eventually we can use it to cook up our gold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our configure IO, I'm gonna look on this side and I'm gonna say output to that direction. Now our alloy smelter is gonna start filling up with gold powder. And just so I can show you here, let's put this gold in this chest. I'm going to set this to input on this side. So it's going to keep this full so long as I got gold in here. I'm going to pull the items from that chest. Awesome. You can see we got some copper here. That's because the Ender IO machines have secondary outputs. You get a, on, and There's a percentage chance that you're going to get something else while doing this. We got some cobble from the ore and some copper. Now. You're going to see in a second here, this is not going very fast. I'm going to leave it like that on purpose for a second. Very shortly, we're going to fill up that slot. It's set to all smelting, which is, um, I, I'll show you in a second, but you'll see that when it's set to all smelting and one other mode, it's going to start to fill up these slots. The alloy smelter does three things at a time. So you'll see that it goes from 64 to 61, and this will increase to 15 when it's done its next work. That's because it, it smelts three things at a time. When you have items across here, it'll grab one from each or grab three from a stack. and It'll just slowly work through them all, so long as they're all the same. This is basically operating on strict furnace mode. And for the sake of saving space, I'm going to put this guy out to push that way. And we're going to give him an octatic capacitor. And we're going to see this chest start to fill up with gold very, very quickly. And eventually copper and eventually stone. And that is going to work on that. Fully automated now. Good to go. Amazing. So some of the other things that this can do is you can put materials in here to modify this secondary and primary output. It can take flint. If I take some flint, you'll see if I hold shift on it, it says the sag mill grinding ball, main output 120%, bonus output 125%, power reduction 15%. So this increases the efficiency increases my yield of gold powder that I'm going to get out of the gold ore and increases the yield of copper that I'm going to get or also stone. If I stick them in there, you'll see that it'll start to work its way through. And what you can't actually see, I may have to, yeah, it might be my resource back. There's a red bar that fills up here. So these kind of have like a fuel type feature to them. They fill the red bar and it'll slowly start to, ch to tick away at this use. The flint does not last that long. However, it is very, very easy to automate getting with a couple of machines and auto clickers and things like that. So you could get flint so fast from one piece of gravel. I mean, not so fast, but fast enough that you could throw it in this machine every once in a while with a bit of automation. So you can see it's increasing the amount of copper I'm getting. Flint's okay, but there is another thing that you can add to the sag mill, and that is um, the dark steel ball. You can see that it adds 150% output to the main output 
it increases our bonus output by 200% and our power reduction by 30%. And they last a little bit longer and they're not even that expensive. So it's still chugging away through here. You can't really see it, but the efficiency has gone up and our copper powder is also increasing. <coughs> Excuse me. Dark steel balls are really just made with five dark steel and they give you five per recipe. Pretty awesome. So that is the sag mill. It can do a few th other things. Um, if you click here on this list, you'll see all of the recipes it has. So it'll smelt or it'll grind up your basic ore structures and systems, giving you um, a main yield and a, a secondary yield and then possibly some stone as well, depending on what you've got in it. And it does most ores. It even does uh, Ardite and stuff from Tinker's Construct, which is actually a result of another mod, but it'll do most things for you. Now it has some other functions. It works with AE really well to grind its stuff up. When you get into grinding um, the ores that are silk touched is when things begin to get a little interesting as well. You can grind sand to get silicon and you'll, it's only 50% chance. It's not the best way to get silicon. This can be used for ender IO as well as a couple of things in um, AE2. But you can see it's got some crafting recipes in ender IO. So you do need it, but getting it by a 50% chance from sand is not the best. You can also get silicon from grinding clay blocks, and that is a much, much higher yield. In fact, I think it's 100%. So if we grind some coal, you'll see that every once in a while, less than 1% of the time, that'll actually give us a diamond if we grind silk-touched coal. It'll give us a few coal and some coal powder and possibly some stone. So that's really, really handy. You grind some coal, every once in a while you'll actually get a second coal powder from it. Ferris has got the, the secondary outputs that Thermal Expansion usually gives it as well. And we can grind our ingots back down and just cruise through here to see what else I can show you. Where's the clay blocks? Some charcoal will give us some pulverized charcoal. Obsidian. Um, oh, crushed obsidian from Railcraft. You know, that'll give us the same set of dusts. You can take blocks of ink, of um, of ores to smelt them into, blo into nine dust. That can be handy if you need a lot of dust really fast from already refined things. Same with steel. Cruising to here, we can grind wood into sod or wood pulp, which can be used to make paper and other things. I, I believe paper, anyways. Let me just double check that. Cardboard boxes. Okay, so this is actually the wood pulp from forestry and can be used to make cardboard boxes from mechanism as well as a couple other things, but not paper. That's the the wood stuff, the wood chips or whatever from thermal expansion. Let's just get ca caught up here because there's a couple that I wanted to show you. And you can do this as well. This is all in any eye. It works really well. There's nothing special about the install. Blaze powder will give you four blaze powder and possibly a sulfur. So if you're in dire need for sulfur, throw some dark steel ball and some blaze rods in there and you should get some rather quickly. You can take your stone bricks and break them back down into stone. Little things like that. Sandstone into sand and gravel into flint. Uh, quartz slabs into just regular quartz. That's kind of handy. Here we go. Redstone ore can give you an 80% chance of getting silicon and a bonus, like a just nine redstone, which is a great yield. So that's an 80% chance. Yeah. Um, if you grind cobblestone, you'll get some sand and possibly some gravel. Netherrack should possibly give you some sulfur. It's not a huge chance, but hey, it's everywhere, so it doesn't need to be a huge chance. Um, as we go through here, you can actually grind glass down into sand. Not sure I agree with that one because, you know, that's not really a thing. But, um, yeah, pretty cool. So diamond will possibly get a second diamond from it. That's not the most efficient way. You're better off using fortune on something like that. Uh, you can get your, your string back from wool. Bone meal, just vastly increase the yield of bone meal. Lapis can be handy as well. Here we go. We get to the, um, the quartz, and that will possibly give you some certus quartz. That's if you have AE2 installed. And the clay will give you an 80% chance of getting silicon. So that's a really good way of getting silicon, a lot better than sand. And we come back and we can get an extra couple seeds from our wheat. So that is the sag mill. A lot of recipes, really handy, really easy to use. Just stick your stuff in and go to town. All right, the alloy smelter. I'm going to plop another one of these down so that can keep working and I can show you guys how this works. I'm going to put this guy right here. The alloy smelter has three slots, as we've seen. It has the same recipes and configuration settings, but it has an extra button. Right now, it's set to all smelting mode because the alloy smelter has two modes. 
it has a alloy mode and a furnace mode and then the generic all mode. The thing about this is it will actually restrict you from putting things in that aren't alloy recipes. So if I just try to melt up some steel dust, excuse me. All right, guys, so we're going to wrap up there as soon as I f um, I'll finish off the alloy smelter next time. Just know that if you're playing with this and your stuff isn't going in properly, you're probably going to have to switch around this mode to make sure it's set to the right thing, and I'll explain that more later. But until next time, next time, I know this is an abrupt finish, but I did not realize we are way over time. That's what happens when I split the episodes. I get lost and think I'm only at 12 minutes, and I'm actually at 30. So we're a bit over time today. Sorry about that. Um, if you want to finish off this mod with me, come on back next time. We'll, we'll hopefully finish it up. If not, we'll have two, one more after that. And uh, it's just it's a great mod. Take your time to go play f play with it. I'll put the uh, the download in the, in the description. And uh, that will be all for today. So I've been Tausty. You're watching Infinity Labs. Check us out next time for another mod spotlight on Ender.io. Have a good day, everybody. Deuces.